Attention, Board of Directors, regular meeting June 14, 2012, at 6.08 p.m. or 18.08. Uh, Director Wisniewski, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll call the board members. Uh, the records show that present are Lynn Wisniewski, Mike Rogers, Alex Swartz attending by phone. Greg Branch has <coughs> had a flight canceled on him this afternoon and is unable to make the meeting. Uh, first item will be uh, the agenda. Any additions or deletions to the agenda for you, Alec? I have none. No. All right. Uh, motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, review the meeting minutes from the May 15th <coughs> meeting. matters? Tre treasurer's yes. report? Yeah, um, Marie, could you read the um, statement of cash worth and the expenditures for the month, please? Certainly. Um, total income for the month of May 2012, 204,441. Expenses are 107,198, $107,198. That is an approximate and also the <clears throat> balance of the, the statement of cash worth, the checking account balance is an approximate of 60925 It just hasn't been balanced yet to the bank account. So there will be a minor um, fees and, and whatnot that have yet to come out of that. Um, but, Thank you. And then the money market account is 142379 and Colo Trust is 387, 387,376 for a total cash worth of 590,881. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I make a motion to approve the expenditures. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any other uh, report from the treasurer? Uh, I have none. Marie and I reviewed the uh, detailed financial statement. We cleared up some questions, so I think we're good to go. Okay. Do you have any? No. Okay, that'll take us to the fire chief report. Okay, uh, it's going to be a very brief uh, report again this month, uh, just uh, catching up on, uh, on uh, some of the previous issues that we had discussed. Uh, we're still working on, uh, on our um, you know, looking at uh, our past level of service that we provided and trying to uh, establish a good uh, baseline and a good uh, idea of what we have been capable of doing in the past. Uh, and um, we found that, you know, we haven't, uh, because we haven't uh, had a, a, any kind of a level of service uh, measurement before, a lot of uh, the basic data has never been created. Uh, you know, one key piece, for example, is that uh, we don't have accurate times of arrival for ambulances or fire engines uh, other than the first arriving unit, uh, the way that our dispatch set system is set up. Uh, and we don't have a good picture of how long it takes us to, you know, get an entire fire alarm assignment, you know, assigned. So, just, just looking at one aspect of it, which is our response times and, and staffing, it, we don't even have the baseline information that it's going to take to, to tell us how well we're doing with that. 
that's something we're going to have to build from here on out by basically going in and changing at the very base level the, the way that uh, apparatus is dispatched and the way that it is recorded on the dispatch system. So I've been working with them uh, with uh, Jefferson County Dispatching on uh, that aspect of it as part of uh, you know, our ability to move on to having the uh, computer-aided dispatching available in the units. Uh, those are two pieces that are going to kind of tie together. Uh, and that'll still be fairly limited because initially we're only going to have that capability on the ambulances and on the uh, command cars because we don't have you know, the mobile computers for the fire engines or anything else. Uh, so we're going to have to rely on, um, on manual input for a lot of that information. Uh, with that, uh, you know, without that kind of baseline data, you know, we're really going to have to just start from here in terms of putting together what we would expect as a, as a minimum level of service uh, you know, standard and moving ahead. Uh, what I'd like to do is plan to take some time Know, at one of the meetings to talk about what it is that we want to uh, be able to uh, look at what we're doing and you know, what are the most critical things that we do for the community and how do we measure that we're doing them. Uh, so for example, with, you know, the basic ones that most fire departments look at are uh, response time, staffing, training of personnel, uh, and um, you know, the capability the right equipment at the right time, uh, getting to the right people. And that's a big bulk of, of what we do, but we also need to look at, you know, are we uh, getting public education messages out effectively? Are people acting on them? Uh, you know, are we, do we have an effective fire prevention program, you know, with the businesses, with the schools, um, you know, and basic things like are we providing a, a good relative level of service for the cost. So, you know, we won't have, you know, data to look at historically about whether we've done any of those things. What we're going to need to do is establish what we see as those priority level of service statements moving ahead. And we're really going to have to just uh, look into the future uh, at how, how well we can meet the standards uh, that we identify. Um, a few of the other things that, uh, that we've been working on, um, you know, we uh, have been working on getting the, uh, the, the, basically the entire computer system uh, that we've had, uh, you know, because it's many years old, uh, we're, we're looking at, you know, making that, uh, that budgeted transition onto a new server, uh, the new uh, T1 line, and uh, we're just getting the last uh, pieces of that put together. And then again, like with that, we're also just now getting the pieces together so that we can, uh, you know, basically talk to dispatch, you know, and, and get uh, bring up the dispatch screens here at the station and, and um, be able to look at what apparatus is out rather than having to, uh, you know, call them on the radio to ask where our fire engines are. Uh, so those those pieces are are uh, falling into place right now, and the other one in, in administration. Uh, side is that uh, the revised uh, Blue Book, the personnel uh, policy manual. Uh, we're about 50% through, uh, you know, kind of the draft on that, and we can expect that that'll be available for next meeting. Excellent, thank you. Okay, on the operation side, uh, some of the things that we found from uh, again from the Lower North Fork fire, we do have the the 800 radios uh, are in service on the apparatus. Personnel are trained on them, so we now have the ability to talk to West Metro Fire when they come up to provide assistance. Um, we've uh, got gotten the uh, Bendix King Fire, the wildland fire radios, and the fire shelters, and we did get uh, a partial partial coverage of those on the on that uh, VFA grant. Uh, it covered part of it, although uh, less than that we were hoping. Uh, on a mutual aid basis, uh, we have uh, really gotten a very good organization started with the local fire chiefs here and have been working through a number of issues, have uh, basically uh, identified ways that we can respond more effectively, uh, you know, 
both within the, the area and to assistance in outside of the area uh, through having uh, pre-designated uh, strike teams and task forces of uh, apparatus available. Uh, and um, we're now doing a, a regular uh, update each week with all of the fire departments so that we know uh, what everybody's resource and staffing levels are. Uh, so, you know, if we have a major event, uh, we know whether we've got uh, resources available locally or not. Right. And then finally, we're trying to trying to start putting some of our operational pieces together uh, with uh, our personnel accountability and with uh, you know, bringing back the rapid intervention team pro uh, programs and, you know, basically uh, doing stuff more on a cooperative basis with the departments than everybody doing their own thing as, as has happened in the past. Is that statewide or is that Jeffco? We're really just working within the, you know, this part of Jefferson County. Um, you know, as I mentioned, uh, we, we've made some, some good progress with, uh, you know, helping out on a larger basis with uh, a number of the other programs. Uh, the evacuation program that we wrote here uh, has uh, gone to be you know, adopted within the local counties here and, uh, and is now, you know, many of the counties in the, in the state are, are going on uh, to utilize that. Uh, the same thing here with this, uh, with the strike teams, uh, you know, both, both us and some of the metro uh, area departments have started to, you know, get this organization done ahead of time to make it more effective to send resources out on fires like the High Park. Um, we're, it's going to have to be a, uh, we're going to have to get some things changed at the state level in order to make that more effective. Uh, we definitely found with the, the fires this last week that there were, there are still some significant uh, holes in the state's resource mobilization program. You know, we had, we drove right past the High Park fire to up to Wyoming uh, because that's where we, you know, we were dispatched to to fight a smaller fire up there, mm -hmm. uh, despite the fact that the High Park fire needed resources. Meanwhile, they're ordering fire engines out of Idaho, you know, to, to come down to work on that fire. Uh, now, obviously, this you know the governor actually himself has gotten involved in that and told him to fix it. Uh, but we're also working on it from our end in terms of you know, trying to provide a model of a more efficient way of, of having a resource availability, um, you know, posted and uh, a quicker way of, of dispatching it. To kind of give you an example, here, uh, you know, when they ordered, uh, they ordered 50 fire engines for the High Park fire. Well, in order to, you know, to get those 50 engines, you know, they send the calls out to Fort Collins, Montrose, Pueblo, and each of those then starts calling around for each department to ask if they have a fire engine available. Uh, and then, you know, when the fire department calls back, you know, they then tell them whether they've got it available, then there's an additional delay while they, you know, get the, the paperwork done and, and tell them, you know, they have to know who are all the people on the fire engine and everything. So the process of sending one fire engine out takes about an hour, mm. and that has to be done 50 different times. Uh, the system that I'm used to in Washington State, you know, it would basically the, the you know the the message would be sent out to all the regional dispatch centers at the same time, and within 30 minutes, uh, they would have back the list of availability of every single fire engine in the state, and within one hour, they could dispatch. Uh, you up to 250 fire engines. Whereas here, it would take about five days to dispatch 250 fire engines. Uh, so, you know, it's, a, it's not an effective process uh, the way it's currently set up now. Uh, but it's gonna take some, some changes at the, in the bureaucratic level to, to make that, uh, you know, effective change. So that, with that, you know, I am working with the state fire chiefs on the resource mobilization uh, committee. However, a lot of that's gonna be in flux because you know, the governor said we want this new unified fire safety uh, department in place by July 1. July 1. Right, 
right? So we do our emergency management, the fire programs from forestry, and the uh, Department of Fire Safety are all you know, working very hard at trying to merge those three departments into a single department. Well, this is a whole other piece of that state, you know, basically state fire marshal responsibility that has never existed in Colorado. And you know, we're trying to we're trying to deal with that, you know, with these large fires, uh, you know, at the same time that they're trying to reorganize three entities uh, into a model that no other state is, has really tried to accomplish. So that is going to be a very interesting uh, situation uh, putting that all together. Yeah, in a very very short time frame. So I don't I don't know uh, if we can. Uh, I have a feeling we're going to be you know kind of working on a on a patch basis on the resource mobilization issues for the rest of this season, uh, and then hopefully um, you know have more time during the during the winter time to build a much more robust model for uh, for doing the, that rapid dispatch uh, system. Okay. And with that, we do have uh, currently one, uh, one brush truck up on the High Park fire right now, uh, and um, uh, the other one is back from, from Wyoming, effective uh, yesterday. Uh, last thing on that, we do have uh, the, new, um, the new ambulances placed in service. Uh, we did elect to uh, keep a fourth ambulance rather than, uh, than surplusing that. Uh, and uh, part of the reason for that is that uh, that also gives us the ability to dispatch an ambulance as needed to other departments uh, for assistance. Uh, you know, we did uh, end up assigning one of our ambulances to the Lord North Park Fire uh, you know, when, when that came around. Uh, and we have set that ambulance up as well to staff the local medical unit as well. So that'll be, uh, that basically that ambulance will serve a dual ro role in that case. Uh, being able to manage the medical needs of a major incident as well as being a uh, reserve ambulance as needed uh, when we have any, any of our ambulances down for maintenance. Alec, did you have a question to the chief? No, uh, I was just wondering, uh, uh, are they going to issue more resource orders for Hyde Park that uh, we can participate in, do you know? We, uh, we got a resource order for Hyde Park earlier today, and uh, then they called back an hour later and canceled it. Uh, so I don't know whether that means that uh, they're reaching the resource needs that they have on that, or whether they elected to pick up uh, another resource from another department, uh, but we're going to remain on call for that at this time. Uh, our our uh, staffing um, policy for that is that we can send uh, no more than two units out of the district at a time. We currently have one out now, so we could uh, we could send a second one. Anything beyond that, and I'd be getting a little too nervous uh, about our own staffing. Mm -hmm. is, that, is the one that's out the reconfigured 433? It is. So they're, they're out, uh, they're actually doing uh, structure protection on that. Uh, uh, and again, that was uh, kind of the way that that particular engine was designed was to yeah. the uh, structure protection engine. Okay, okay. thanks. Okay, and then the last thing with that, uh, you know, as far as um, you know, our community programs, the mitigation programs, uh, we have uh, had great turnout with uh, with quite a few of the um, the uh, programs we've put on lately, and we've got uh, several uh, communities that are progressing with the Firewise Communities program. Uh, we also have right now the uh, we've just gotten the uh, mitigation grant applications for the upcoming year. And uh, we're going to work really hard on publicizing uh, that information because um, you know the, those mitigation grants go to communities that are participating in projects that are uh, identified as part of the community wildfire protection planning process. Uh, so you know the grants are not available to communities who simply you know want to come in and say, well, we think we want to do this. It has to be part of that organized process where 
we look at uh, communities, identify the you know the highest priorities, and and list those priority projects, and then it's the priority projects that will get funded uh, through that process. So we want to encourage more uh, communities to participate in that, and then by doing that, become uh, eligible for the um, the mitigation grants uh, that are are uh, going to be opening up in the next. Uh, I thought the Firewise uh, deal last month was very well attended, pretty informative. Thank you. Uh, did you want to talk about the new ambulance? Oh, uh, yep. Oh, I mentioned the old one being in service. The new one uh, was placed in service and we got the license for it uh, yesterday. All right. So we're, we're fully, uh, fully set to go on that. Do you have any questions for the chief, Alec? I'm good, thank you. Okay, thanks, chief. Uh, legal update, I don't have anything new. Uh, citizens issues. <clears throat> any citizens issues tonight? Old business, do you have any old business, Alec? No, just what's listed the board vacancy. Okay. Do you have any other new old, new old business? Okay, uh, the only item then to discuss tonight is the board vacancy. Uh, we put the notice out, uh, same as we've done in the past when we've had these board vacancies. Uh, we did have two interested individuals respond by the deadline, uh, Mr. Barrett and uh, Mr. Fox. Uh, Mr. Fox is out of town right now and re sent his resume and a letter of interest and also requested that we postpone it till next month so he would have an opportunity to come here and uh, speak to the board. Uh, contact, have Marie contact Mr. Barrett, uh, instructing him that we will hold these interviews uh, at the July meeting. Uh, so both of them will be attending the July meeting, so we'll take up interviews for the board vacancy with the two interested candidates at the July board meeting. Uh, new business. Any new business? Mm -hmm. uh, any other business that may be brought before the board? How about a motion to adjourn? Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. At 1830. Thanks, Alec. Okay, thank you. Okay. See you next week. All right, bye. Bye.